Welcome back to the Graham Steffen Show. So as you might know, I live in Las Vegas, and the Las Vegas community here is pretty small when you really get into it. Like outside of the strip where everyone goes to vacation, tourists go to, uh, you know, have a good time. It's pretty small here. The communities are actually really quiet. And uh, I want to say maybe a year or two, or maybe it's three years ago, I met this uh, lovely lady, Norma. And uh, Norma's a YouTuber with 123,000 subscribers, and she is very brave because she posted a video. It's titled, How Much I Spend in One Month Living in Las Vegas. And she knows I'm going to see it, and I can't play favorites here. I mean, I'm going to be ruthless in this video. I'm going to be brutally honest, and I'm going to critique how much somebody else spends of their money. So with that said, if that sounds like a good time to you, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe because we're closing in on a million subscribers. And uh, with that said, thank you so much. And now let's begin. Las Vegas is marvelous, ain't it? But it's not your typical city to live in. I've lived in Las Vegas for over 18 years now, and I've lived all over the Las Vegas Valley. So I've experienced what it's like to live in different neighborhoods here. Look at that watering their garden. That's cute. In Las Vegas, why? It's, it's sand and rocks everywhere. What point? is there to have grass. Makes no sense. If anything, you have AstroTurf. That's what you should be doing in Las Vegas. Water is just not something you just wanna be spraying out to the front lawn like that. For grass that what? Just passes away in the summer? I can't say that one word because I don't know if YouTube's gonna demonetize it, but yeah, the grass just, on a lives in the summer. It's not good. I did do this video exactly one year ago, but so much has changed. So I figured that you guys needed an update and boy have things changed. All right, let's find out what it takes to live a month in Las Vegas. Yeah, nobody who lives in Las Vegas, by the way, ever goes to the strip. People have this idea in their mind where they're like, oh, you live in Las Vegas. I can never do that. Like, what do you expect? I'm living in the cosmopolitan, just gambling every, no, gosh, no. You never go to the strip. It's like, uh, whatever tourist spot in your area, like, do you go there? Chances are probably not. That's, that's Vegas people with the strip. You just never go there. It's actually a really quiet, nice little community. It's very residential, a lot of families. It's nice. You don't, you don't get any weird stuff. But anyway, with the strip, it has nothing to do with where you spend your money. So I live in a one bedroom apartment. It's about 700 square feet, and this is more than enough for me, to be honest. This is my favorite room in the entire apartment. Um, of course, the living room where I do all my Netflix watching, YouTube watching, I eat late dinners right here. Ah, uh, it looks like a very cozy unit. I like it. it. It's the right amount of space. In Las Vegas, you really don't need that much. I mean, sure, a mansion would be nice, a five car garage, all that stuff would be great, but this is all you need, really. My editing, my scripting, all my brainstorming, right here in this little corner. Look how small it is. Then we have my bedroom right here. I told you guys this last time, um, I'm not a very good decorator, so I did have a lot of people help me in this, but as you can see, I feel like my place is very minimalistic. You know what? You need something above the bed right there, like maybe some piece of artwork or like hang something, or you know what? Even like a headboard. It's, it's missing something. You shouldn't just have your pillows right up against the wall like that. It, I think a headboard, that's all you need go a long way. Okay, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick lay of the land so that way you guys kind of understand why I pay so much for this. All right, you ready guys? I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you my biggest bill of the month, which is of course this place. My guess, uh, a one bedroom, probably 17 to 1950 a month. It really depends on the location though. This in a bad location, $1,200. In a really, really good location, maybe 2200. So my guess is, We'll say 1950. I'm gonna lock that in. 1950 a month. Let's see. I pay one thousand nine hundred thirty dollars and fifty four cents. Whoa! Come on, guys. I am good. That's the real estate background. Uh, how many years is it? It's, it's been fifteen years. Yeah, it's been fifteen years since I got into real estate. Two thousand and eight. Time flies. But yeah, th there we go. I love real estate. I check Zillow and LoopNet every single day. I spend 30 minutes a day just browsing whatever comes in the market. I see everything both for rent and for sale because I like to be kept up to date on what's happening in the market. And I like seeing prices come down because that means eventually I'm gonna get a good deal when I buy something. Here's some of the other home expenses. Uh, so for my electricity, it was $30.17, which I actually don't think that that bad. I mean, of course it is January, so it's not like I have the AC on going all day. I mean, I get the heater once in a while. Yeah, you know what, here's the thing though. Utilities have been going up. So I don't know if I told this 
I, I keep forgetting what I've said on YouTube and then what I've told to people in person. It's probably an in-person conversation. It's, it's the same thing now. Anyway, um, my utility bill here in Las Vegas used to be about $250 a month, and that would be electricity, okay? $250, which I thought was pretty good considering at the time I was charging a Tesla. I was running the air conditioner in the summer, heating the pool, like doing everything, having all lights for filming, like everything, any aquarium, okay, so 250. And now it's like $480 a month, just for electricity, okay? Nothing has changed. I thought for sure it's like, okay, maybe I'm running the AC a little bit more, maybe like the aquarium's pulling a little bit more because they put a new light on the top of it. No, it's the same. It's just electricity costs have gone up a lot lately. And I, you know, I'm doing the best I can, guys, but still, it's insane. It's so much money now. So for her, 30 bucks, fantastic. For car insurance. Now, I personally just like to pay everything up front if I could, so I do pay um, my car insurance all at once. You know, I pay for all six months together. For one month, it's like I would be paying $101.66. That's fantastic. It's really not that bad. I pay a very similar amount uh, for my car as well. You know, about the same. It's not bad. I do the same thing, by the way. At first, I was like, oh no, we'll break it up per month. Because I just hated seeing the money come out of my account. Now it's so much easier. You just pay it all off at once and you never have to worry about it. Because I've had it happen once before where I changed credit cards and I forgot that was on the auto bill and then the car insurance never got paid. So uh, there you go. Just pay it off. Everybody keeps telling me to get a new car, which would be nice, but I think not having a car payment is even nicer. But if I was to get a new car, I think I would get maybe the new Bronco. What do you guys think? Comment below what your opinion is on the new Bronco and if I should get it. No, I'm not in Vegas, because you end up doing so much driving. The mileage and just the gas cost would be exorbitant. I get the new Prius. I love the new 2023 Prius. Love it. If, uh, if I didn't have a Tesla, I'd be driving the Prius. Honestly, it looks like that good of a car. All right, so of course we have to talk about groceries, hence why I brought you to Trader Joe's. So for groceries in the month of January, I spent $142.44. Dang, my car eats more than I do. Now, I do think it's because I mainly eat out a lot. I mean, you know, because of the videos. That's actually pretty good. But again, if you're eating out all the time for videos, it's a business expense, but it's also more expensive. So for the gym that I go to, they're all workout classes. So I'm not like in a, like a regular gym, I guess you could say. I basically bought a year membership that costs $1,399. For the gym, if I was to divide it you know, into one month, I pay $116.58. That's expensive, but you know what? If it's the ones that give you classes, then it's probably worth it. I wish we could get an Equinox here in Summerlin. For those unaware, Equinox is like this really expensive luxury gym that's anywhere between like 220 to like $350, but it is so good that it makes you wanna to go to the gym. If you're the type where you wanna to go to the gym every day, you do that because it just pushes you to go. This is really nice. Guys, if you don't work for a corporation and you have to get your own health insurance, it's really expensive. And I pay $293.45. I know, I mean, I just, i rather have it because you never know what could happen, you know? Yeah, welcome to insurance. I pay $300 for myself a month. Uh, no pre-existing conditions. I never, like, I had the highest deductible imaginable. It's like a catastrophic plan, and even that is like $300 a month. For what? What do you get? It's easier just to pay out of pocket. Half the time, I go to the doctor, I'd rather just pay it. Pay it myself, don't go through insurance because they make it so difficult. And then it's like, they, you get the bill later and then you have to dispute it because they put a wrong charge on it. They have to be on the phone. It's like, I'd rather just pay the $25 myself. Bad, it's so bad. Let's start talking about YouTube expenses. So I told you guys, a lot of things have changed since last year. In the month of January, for all my YouTube expenses and everybody I have to pay was $1,795.97. All right, but how much you making in that? She's spending 1,800, she'll make $7,000 back probably. So, um, oh, look at this lady in the back. She's looking at the camera. She's like, oh, I, but is this for a TikTok? What is this? Yeah, 1700, it's not terrible, but it's part of her business anyway. Now, I don't think I spend that much on myself. Like I'm not buying expensive brands or anything like that. I feel like I'm simple. So on Amazon, I bought stuff like medication, a vacuum backpack, a makeup bag, an air fryer, some gym clothes, a massage gun. So for Amazon, I spent a total of $615.59. A lot of those are one-off expenses. Like you're not gonna be buying a massage gun every, every month 
or an air fryer every month. That, that's maybe once every five years you do that, you know? Uh, so a lot of those probably take that down to maybe $200 a month, realistically. I can't lie, guys. Um, I have a little bit of an obsession. Um, I love crab. You know the one that comes like in the bag and they put like the spices, potatoes, corn? Oh, I love that. Oof, another big one, guys. $727.43. Ooh, that's it. Yeah, that's a lot. Eating out like that? That's, that's, where the, that's where the cost is going. Crab legs. You gotta find a way to make that for yourself though. Like buy them, steam them yourself, and put the spices on them and save half the price. And then also like random little things like for my T-Mobile, for my phone, I pay $85 a month. T-Mobile, 85? No, get Boost Mobile. That's what I did. Boost Mobile, it's $50 a month, unlimited everything. It's a prepaid plan, so you just pay in advance, but you know what? It's so much cheaper. You could save 50% basically on your cell phone plan just by going to Boost Mobile, and they can transfer your phone number over. It's so much better. In the month of January, 2023, I spent $6,329.64. Yeah, that's a lot of money, but you know what the thing is, like, $2,000 a month of that is for business expense, so take that down to four. Then $2,000 a month is in uh, her rent, takes it down to two, so she's really kind of blowing $2,000 a month, right? And then what we subtract like the car insurance stuff like, it's really like $1,200 a month of miscellaneous expenses that she did not have to actually spend. That's the way I see it. So $1,200 a month, that's her real out-of-pocket cost that uh, is just extra. But yeah guys, hopefully this gave you a good idea of what it's like to live in Las Vegas on your own. So if this is something that you want, you can kind of start planning for it now. Comment below, do you think I spend too much in a month? I think I do. I think I'm gonna have to reevaluate my situation. All right, let's see the comments. What do the comments say? Andrew and I pay almost $2,000 a month for rent now too. When we first moved here, we pay less than $900 a month for our one bedroom apartment. Well, thanks to people from California coming over here and ruining it for, oh wait. Uh, next next comment. Norma, thank you for sharing this with us. P.S. I will never skip the ads anymore so you can get most ad revenue you can. Dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. Well, if you want to watch the ads on here too, that would, I don't know if I could say that, but you know what you can do if you want to help support the channel, you get a free stock down below in the description when you sign up with their sponsor, public.com with the code Graham and make a deposit because that could be worth all the way up to $1,000. And guess what, guys? They're also coming out with treasuries. So that means instead of going through the really outdated treasuries direct website, you could buy treasuries directly on the public app. And right now, I think the six-month treasury is paying somewhere around 5% interest, which is insane. So essentially, you'd be able to get around 5% return on your money just by going with that. And again, you could buy those at public.com slash gram. Enjoy. Let me know which free stock you get. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.